Gabby Morangiello, White House correspondent for the Washington Examiner. So this kind of hit like a bolt out of the blue, a former Supreme Court justice saying, let's get rid of the Second Amendment, Gabby. Right, and the president was obviously a fierce defender of the Second Amendment and a favored candidate of the National Rifle Association during the 2016 presidential election. So this tweet responding to that op-ed this morning was really no surprise, um, nor was it a surprise to see this op-ed written by former Justice Stevens, um, who was the primary dissenter in D.C. versus Heller, that uh, landmark case on gun control back in 2013. So. You know, looking at this, I actually spoke to a Republican who was close to the White House yesterday. Um, I asked this person, you know, what is the likelihood now that Congress actually acts on gun control? And this person said that the Stevens op-ed and a lot of what you heard from the March uh, for Our Lives activists over the weekend has actually hurt their cause because this is a former Supreme Court justice fervently arguing for a repeal of the Second Amendment, which is something um, that has obviously been talked about by gun control opponents. Um, used to instill fear in, in people who are gun owners, who don't want their weapons confiscated, who don't want to see the regulation of certain firearms. So now that they can actually point to this and say, look, proponents of gun control actually do want to repeal the Second Amendment, it really gives um, people in this White House, in this administration, leverage. So this energizes the NRA and, and those who favor gun rights, gun, gun ownership rights, you're saying? Absolutely. Or that, that, that's how it's perceived at the White House, at least. That's how it's being perceived here. I mean, if you talk to gun control pro pro proponents, they really, um, they've, they've tried to argue previously, look, this, these people who are pushing for expanded background checks, pushing to regulate certain firearms, to get rid of certain firearms like the AR-15, what they really want is to confiscate weapons. And that's obviously not a message that goes over well, particularly in conservative-leaning states, red states like Texas, states like West Virginia. So for gun control p proponents, including this president, to now actually have um, a prominent figure, a prominent proponent of gun control, arguing for a full repeal of the Second Amendment by ratifying the Constitution, as I said, it gives them leverage, it gives them a concrete um, op-ed to point to and say, this is what they want, we're not lying when we say that. I was a little surprised to read Justice Stevens, Stevens saying abolishing the Second Amendment would be simple. Uh, tinkering with the Constitution is never simple, and there's obviously going to be a huge upswell of opinion, you know, from states where gun rights are very much supported. Yes, it's no easy task, um, and it's something that hasn't been done in decades, and I think that's really unlikely right now, given that we have a Republican majority in both houses of con in both chambers of Congress, excuse right. me. Um, so, no, I, I don't think that that's a simple thing to do, and I was surprised, too, to see that in the op-ed. You also have a president, as you pointed out, who says it's not going to happen. Right. They, they have no intention of pursuing something like that. In fact, they're looking at some more reasonable options right now. You know, the president, as he's already mentioned, has looked at getting rid of bump stocks or at least regulating them in some fashion. Um, he's talked about expanding background checks, working with some senators on the Fix NICS Act. And so there are obviously a lot of things that they are trying to push through Congress, but ratifying the Constitution is not something that's going to happen. Gabby Morangiello, uh, White House correspondent at the Washington Examiner. Thanks for coming on today. Well, there'll be a civil war if you take away the Second Amendment. Could you imagine the armed people coming to gun owners' homes, knocking on the door and say, surrender your weapons now or else? I mean, it would be an absolute bloodbath. And then what are you going to do? You're going to give all of your weapons away and then only the good guy, only the bad guys are going to have guns? Well, that's I mean, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. There's going to be a, a crime spree across the country. Or you give up all your weapons, and then the police, the military, and President Donald Trump has all the power. Exactly. Is that what liberals really want? So to echo Greg's point, which was really well said, this is why people get nervous. And it's refreshing to hear Democrats tell the truth. Truth, yeah. But this is a slippery slope argument, and it makes people join the NRA, because you want to protect and expand your freedoms. You don't want to restrict them. I would say it's, it's the hardest thing to do in this country. You have to have, what, two-thirds majorities of the House and Senate, mm -hmm. and then you have to have three-fourths of the states, which I think is 38 states or something like that. It will never, ever happen. And to your point, red state Democrat senators, they don't want to read this in the New York Times.